Okay, so the first technique that we're going to talk about is this really cool textured stamping technique using lunar paste. It is amazing, and when you tilt these in the light, you get all of that intense shine, but you also get tons of texture in your card too, and you'll get several different versions of each one of these techniques. So it's going to be a ton of fun. All right, I'm going to stack these guys up. This is sort of what we're going to be creating, okay? So, what you're going to need is some sort of background stamp for this. I am pulling in some of my new background stamps, but let's talk about what makes a good background stamp for this technique, because I was testing it last night, and you really do have to use a certain type of background stamp, okay? So this new one called Handwritten is going to work really amazing for this technique, mainly because it's super fine detailed, there's not a ton of bold areas in this stamp, so it's going to make it work perfectly for this. In fact, at the trade show when I discovered this technique, um, I was using this stamp the whole time and it really gives great results every time. I highly recommend, if you don't have one too, like a handwriting background stamp, no matter what it is, I just think that it adds so much great texture to the background. You can stamp it on top of things for a subtle texture. So this is one of my favorite stamps and we just released it. Um, so something like this, these are the borders. So these are floral borders. Um, so you peel these off and you can use them each individually. Now, some of these aren't gonna work. Like this one might be a little bit too bold. This one, kind of the leaves are maybe a little bit too bold in here, but those flowers are pretty good. So you maybe could use this one. This is like the perfect stamp for it. I did use this a couple times. And then this sunflower is completely off limits. Like this is not gonna work for it mainly because you want something fine detailed because if you have anything too bold, it's going to just squeeze all of the lunar paste out of it, right? So you wanna look for something fine detailed. This Kaleidoscope Florals background stamp is perfect for this technique. It worked amazing and I absolutely love the look of this one. It could be sort of like florals, kind of for spring. Um, it has some peel apart sections so you can stamp some of them individually, which is really great. And then I wanted to show this too because we're gonna use this later for a technique, but for this technique specifically, this is gonna be the most nightmarish of a background stamp ever. Just because there's so much, um, there's so much, uh, uh, what is it, solid space in this stamp that it's just going to squeeze all the lunar paste everywhere and it's gonna make an absolute mess. So really, something with super fine detail like one of these two background stamps is going to be absolutely perfect, all right? I'm gonna start off with this one and maybe if we have time I'll do both of them, but I do have examples with both of them in it that we'll be using. All right, so. I'm gonna grab out a piece of my Simon Hurley Stark White cardstock, and before I bring the stamp in, I'm gonna set that off to the side, and we're gonna do a little bit of lunar paste. All right, so I can pull in any colors of lunar paste. You really want to have fun with the different colors that you can create with. Um, for today's cards, I was using more Valentine's Day colors, so I'll show you some of these that are some of my favorites to kind of mix together and create really beautiful blends. Um, but one of my favorite parts about this is you can mix together as many colors as you want, and it almost creates like, a gradient of metallic cardstock, which is really beautiful. So I'll go in here. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of orange. This one's called Roar. And then I'll use a little bit of Prom Queen, which is this really beautiful like hot pink color. I'm gonna then go in with a little bit of Love Struck. This is one of the new colors. It's really a beautiful one. And then I'll also go in with a little bit of Crown Me. But there are some other great colors at the show. I was using this as a color combo and I really absolutely love it. Um, this one is Clear Skies and then you'll go Later Gator and Tropical Tango. This was one of everyone's favorites just because it kind of creates that really beautiful gradient of color from the blues and greens. So have fun mixing the other colors and kind of coming up with your own color combos. If you guys try this, be sure to tag me in your results. I can't wait to see what you guys create with it. So when it comes to laying down your lunar paste on the background, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna get just a little bit of paper towel ready so I can wipe off my uh, palette knife in between. This palette knife is from the paste tool set and I'll show you the rest of the, the tool set later on because it makes it really easy to do this technique and get a really great result. So a little bit of this paste goes a long way when you're doing something like this. Now if you add too much, don't worry, I'll show you how to use it later on some other backgrounds as well, but just like a little glob of color at one side is going to go a really long way. So I'll just create kind of a square of that paste up there. I'll do just the tiniest bit more. All right, I'll add that down. And then we're going to put any of the excess back into the jar. The thing that I love about Lunar Paste is that all of these colors are pre-mixed for you, right? They're all made out of dirt, different mica powders in each one. 
But what's really awesome about that is you can put it back into the jar once you're done using it. So you're not gonna have any go to waste. You're also not worried about like remixing any colors. So that's been one of my favorite things about Lunar Paste from the start is you could just dig into that jar and get the exact same color every single time rather than having to kind of mix re-inkers and create your own colors. So it works out really well. All right. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of Love Struck. This is that new gorgeous berry red color. Going to pull out a little bit of this and swipe it down onto your surface. So here I'm using four colors. I would say like three or four, maybe even five is probably good. I've even done like kind of a rainbow of I think six colors across the surface, but you don't want to do too many because it might kind of muddy up the colors. But I find that like three or four is usually a great blend of color. All right. Yes, they do last a really long time. I've been creating backgrounds. Uh, I created quite a few last night with all these colors and I still got quite a bit of paste left in here. I don't know if I've opened a new one since these colors came out. Like they really do last a long time, which is awesome. All right. I'll grab that little chunk and just add it down. And so I'm just adding them down to one side of the cardstock rather than like adding them into the center or trying to swipe it down with my palette knife. Cause you'll see there's a really easy way to scrape this across and get it nice and smooth. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll wipe off my palette knife, make sure that everything's nice and clean. You do, while you're working, you do wanna make sure that things are cleaned off um, because once the lunar paste dries, it's going to be a little bit more permanent on the surface of these. So then with the paste tool set, you also get two scrapers inside of here. And these scrapers are super nice for creating really great and smooth backgrounds. I love them for kind of swiping across the surface and, and creating your own kind of really smooth effect. Or if you uh, stencil, this is a great tool for smoothing your stencils out as well. So I'm just gonna go right in here and I'm just going to grab that paste from the one side and sort of just swiping it over. All right, really super easy to do. Now if there's any little chunks in there, Sometimes the edges of the jars get little, get little clumps in them, so just pull that out quickly because you want it to be nice and smooth. All right, so we'll smooth this out. Now, I see some people using this, uh, this scraper tool and they just keep swiping like this, right? And you're not really getting any more paste down onto the surface, but you still have a lot of paste on the back here. The reason why is because if you're doing it at this angle, you're not going to distribute any more of that paste. But when you're using this tool, kind of push it down like this at more of a downward angle, and then you're going to distribute all that paste out onto the surface, which is gonna help you spread it across more evenly. All right, that's a really great tip. So play with the different ways that you hold this tool. If you want to scrape more off the surface, use it at more of an upward angle and scrape it off and that really makes a difference on how you're gonna apply your paste and how easy it is to use the tool. Now, when you're applying your lunar paste down onto the surface, I'm gonna scrape, honestly, most of it off. Like, you want a very thin layer of lunar paste. Now, if you try this technique several times and you don't get the results you like, you'll kind of vary the, the different thickness of paste that you apply. But I think this is pretty good. I did a pretty thin amount. It's not super thick. I don't know how to really show you here. It's almost like you're scraping like all of the paste off and you still want a light layer enough so you don't see the cardstock underneath, but not too thick where the stamp is gonna wake up and kind of smush all out, all right? Then you're going to take your stamp. This is the handwritten background stamp. Again, something with a nice fine detail if you don't use this one. And I'm just going to drop it right into the background. Now, last night when I was playing with this technique, if you push really hard, again, it's going to smush all of the lunar paste all over the place and kind of make a mess. So when you do this, you want to really lightly just kind of tap along the surface, give a little bit of pressure, but not too much. And then once you're done, lift it off the surface. I don't let this stamp dry or anything inside of there. You don't want any of that to happen because the lunar paste does dry quickly. So once you're done placing that in there, you want to lift it off. Now check out that beautiful background that you get. Isn't that insane? The thing that I love about lunar paste is it's thicker than a paint. So if you were to do this with a paint, you wouldn't be able to press anything into it like this. But with the lunar paste, you're able to press it in and it will hold all of that amazing texture uh, as it dries. So you'll get all this texture in here. Nothing will change as it dries. Now I'm gonna set this off to the side and let it dry. You're gonna wanna give it maybe like 30 minutes to an hour depending on your climate. Um, 
It just kind of depends on where you live uh, with the dry time. You can always use a heat tool to help heat set this and it won't affect the paste, but I prefer to just set it off to the side and keep working on different things. And I'll pull in some of the other projects that I've already created um, to finish off the technique. Because you guys might think that that's, that's where we stop, but there is a lot more you could do with it, which is awesome. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of water and spray this down. You're gonna wanna work on a craft sheet and then you could just spray it down easily. And see, so you're gonna get paste on your hands, but it cleans off pretty easily just by washing your hands later on. I'm just gonna wipe this off my surface. And a quick cleaning tip, when the lunar paste is wet, it will break down with water. So add lots of water down and it'll help break down the lunar paste and keep it from drying while you're cleaning it. Um, but once that dries, it's not gonna break down with water anymore. It's gonna be kind of more permanent. So you'll have to sort of scrape it off the surface. So definitely clean it while it's still wet. Now with this technique, it's really awesome because there's other ways to use the background then. So we've still got a little bit of paste onto our background stamp. And before that starts to dry, I'm going to flip this over and stamp it down, give it some good pressure. And you don't wanna leave this too long on here because again, it's gonna start drying and it might rip the cardstock, but check that out. Super beautiful. And the cool part about this is all the amazing shine that you get in the stamping, right? I love that, you get that metallic shine. Um, but also, it, it stands out against black cardstock too. The colors are nice and opaque, so you're getting some really great textured stamping with all of that intense color and pearlized shine too. So I love that, I think it's so cool. Let me set that off to the side because we still have another background too that we can do. I'm going to pull another piece of cardstock in here and I'm going to, yeah, let's do it this way. I'm going to take this. There's still a lot of paste on my tool. So again, instead of holding it upright like this, I'm going to hold it at this sideways angle so that we can easily distribute that paste across the surface. And check that out. Just this beautiful, smooth background of paste. And there's still a little bit on there. All right, I love that. How cool. So we'll let that dry, and then once this dries, the shine will come back to life even more. If you're using your lunar paste, it'll kind of lose its shine as you're applying it onto the surface, but once the water sort of evaporates out of here and it starts to really dry, then you get all of that amazing pearlized shine back, and this is gonna be an insane metallic cardstock, which of course you could die cut out of, but I'm gonna show you some fun techniques to use this as well. All right, now let me set this off to the side. I'm gonna quickly clean off my tools. And I wanna talk a little bit about cleaning more in depth because now you've got a stamp with paste all over it, right? And that stamp has really fine details which sort of makes the paste a little bit difficult to get out. But I'm gonna show you a trick. So this is our background stamp. We got paste all over it. Now if that doesn't bother you, um, it's not a huge deal, but sometimes the paste might resist the ink a little bit more and it, it won't create the best result. So if you want to make sure your stamps are nice and clean, one of the biggest things that I can recommend is this Ranger Rub It Scrub It pad. I absolutely love this thing. I've linked it down in my supplies list down below. It is amazing. I don't know if they uh, sell a lot of these, but it's like my pride and joy when it comes to cleaning out paste. Um, some of the other cleaning methods that I've found, like stamp cleaners and things like that, and like those scrubber pads, sometimes like the, the hairs of them fall out. Um, sometimes when you close it, it gets sort of moldy and mildew. Um, whereas this is nice and open, so it's going to dry. Um, last night when I used it, I really soaked this thing and it's now completely dry. So it's not gonna become smelly or anything like that. And also this, this surface is more of like a spongy, uh, coarse surface, but it doesn't have a bunch of little fibers that are gonna come off on your project. So I love this thing, I highly recommend one. I just take some water, kind of douse my stamp in water, and then I'll take this Rub It Scrub It pad, which has this nice foam base, so it's pretty easy to grab onto. And I'll just simply scrub. Rub it and scrub it, right? <laughs> and this really gets into those details, you can see that, that color coming off of there. But it gets all into the fine details and makes it so easy to clean off. Now, of course, after some time, you're gonna have to replace this. I think I've been through like two of these in my lifetime of crafting, but it's super helpful when you have something that's a little bit more tricky like that, um, that needs some cleaning out. Now, of course, you could spray stamp cleaner on here and clean stamps too, but I really just keep it for um, things with the lunar paste because it really makes it super easy to clean out. 
And then once you're done with that, you'll still notice there's some like suds and kind of um, foam on it. So I'll just go back in with a microfiber cloth. I like a microfiber cloth for this because then those little fibers get down into that stamp a little bit more and just make sure that it's nice and clean. So I got a lot of questions about, you know, when you're, when you're doing this technique, how do you get your stamp back clean? That's the biggest thing that I can recommend is that rub it, scrub it pad, or if you have like a nice uh, chorus sponge that will help clean that out and then wipe it off with some sort of microfiber or towel and it'll be nice and clean. So it's back to new. It literally looks brand new. Um, and then we can set it off to the side and continue with our technique. So I set that off to the side, the one that we've already finished. Now I have some that I created last night already and I want to show you quickly the difference between a couple of these backgrounds. So here, everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Here, I applied the paste a little bit thicker. So you can see those indents are really thick right there. And I might have pressed down a little bit more than I probably should have too. Um, but I still love how this background turned out. It still has tons of beautiful texture in there and some amazing shine. This one has uh, littler grooves, so it was probably applied a little bit thinner. And same thing with this one, some smaller grooves, but, but probably a little bit deeper than this one. So each background is going to vary depending on how much paste you apply down onto the surface and how hard you press in with your background stamp. I'm gonna use this one today with this uh, beautiful handwritten font into it. And I'm gonna show you how to kind of step this up even one more notch, all right? And to do this, I'm gonna grab out a little bit of lunar paste in the slippery and wet color. And I'll pull it out. And for this technique, I'm just gonna use my finger. It's one of my favorite things to do with lunar paste because you don't have to necessarily clean off another sponge. But if you want to, you could probably use a sponge on this. I just haven't tried it, so I don't know how it's gonna work out. But like I said, uh, once you're done with all the lunar paste techniques, it's pretty easy to kind of clean off your fingers after a while and, uh, and you don't have to worry too much about it. So I'm gonna go um, right in here with a little bit of this gold slip and wet lunar paste. I'm going to bring it onto the surface and I'm just going to start rubbing it right over top of all of that texture and sort of gently buffing it into that surface. And you can see that it's starting to catch on to that font that's underneath it because it has that nice indent in it, right? So this is a fun way to sort of highlight that texture that you've created with another color. And you could use any color you want. I happen to really like this slippery and wet gold color just because it's a nice yellow gold. It's going to really stand out from a lot of the colors that we use in the background. But you could use whatever color you want to achieve this and get that sort of two-toned effect. And so just take a little bit, again, a little bit goes a long way and sort of swipe it across the surface here. And again, it's going to go into all of those debossed areas and create this gorgeous look. Now, you're probably like, Simon, this is absolutely a hot mess, right? Because now there is a ton of lunar paste all over this background in areas where we really don't want it. Now, before anything starts to dry, you want to go in with a paper towel, all right? And I'm gonna grab a little bit of water. Now you could grab the water on the paper towel like this and just spray the paper towel down. And now the lunar paste underneath, since it's dry, it's going to resist that water completely. So you don't have to worry about pulling any of the lunar paste up underneath. And I'm just going to go in with a little bit of water and start wiping this off. Now at the trade show, I just sprayed the water right down to the surface. I find that that works a little bit better. The, like I said, the lunar paste underneath is going to be completely waterproof. Because it almost forms like a plastic layer once it's completely dry. So you're not affecting any of that. And you're just able to wipe off that top surface of lunar paste. All right. And now, check that out. How cool is this, right? You get this really beautiful background. You now see all the colors that you put underneath it. But now there's this insane, intense gold color that's in all of those debossed details that you created. How cool is that? So it's just a really fun way to add that, that gold color inside of there, get this kind of two-toned effect on your background and really step it up and bring it to life. How fun is that, right? So pretty easy to do. By laying down that first layer of that color and getting that amazing texture there. And then if you want to, you could totally leave it like this. I think that this looks great as well. If you don't wanna highlight the design and you want it to be more in the background, 
But if you really want to highlight that design a little bit more, this is a really fun way to do it by going back into that texture with another color of lunar paste, right? How cool is that? So many of you are saying, yeah, that's gorgeous. A foam dauber would give you definitely a similar effect. I don't know how it would work with sort of buffing it into that lunar paste, but, but definitely try it out. You can definitely use some foam and usually it gives pretty similar results. All right, now how cool is that? Okay, now, last night when I was creating these backgrounds, I was like, okay, I love how that looks with the lunar paste, but we have a whole nother line of paste, right? That solar paste is still a thing too. So I wanted to test it out with solar paste. I'll share some of the results that solar paste gives as well and some of the things you can do with it too. So let me turn back down to my work surface. Now here on this background, I happened to go in and use the floral borders background stamp. I used this one here, so that fine detail one. Absolutely stunning. And for this one, I used the Royal Flush Solar Paste in the background. Okay, and I just swiped it on here. Now you can see that little bit of purple shine in the background, right? How pretty is that? But I didn't know when to stop here. So once this texture dried, I went back in with a lunar paste and I put it down into those that texture detail. So here again, you get that little bit of gold kind of leafing almost on top of all that amazing texture. And then in the background, you get that purple shine. So a really cool way, I'm not sure if I love these colors that I used here, but a really cool way to, to use the lunar and solar paste together and create such a stunning effect, right? Then I stamped off on the background. So again, you get that stamping. I don't know if you guys can necessarily see it, but I'll show you how to sort of highlight something like this as well in a second. Then you get that really beautiful solar pasted cardstock that you can of course die cut out of. Now, uh, I also used the solar paste and this one happens to be the cross my heart color and I used the kaleidoscope flowers. This time, instead of doing a whole background because solar paste is sort of that white paste, right? This, this blends in. So I wanted to just do like a swipe, like almost like a border across the card that you can then put a focal point on and have a little bit of interest just kind of trickling down the side. So here I just swiped on a little bit of that paste on one side. I scraped it down with my scraper and then I, I, I put the stamp into here and you get that beautiful texture and that little bit of red shine once you tilt in the light. So I love these solar pastes. Sometimes um, in Germany, everyone was like, oh yeah, solar paste is only for black cardstock, right? Because you get that really bold color on black. But I love it on white cardstock, mainly because you get that the less bold effect so that you still get that little bit of color and shine, a little bit of texture in the background wherever you put it. But then you can have your focal point be the, the true thing that stands out. So the cool part about solar paste is that they can really stay in the background in case if you want a more simple card and you want your focal to, to really be the thing that shines on your card. Right, then again, I stamped off. So again, you've got that little bit of like, can you see it? A little bit of shiny stamping there. And then I also swiped it off to the side and this is like super thin, right? And even with something as thin as this, you can then take the stamp press it down into here and you get that textured stamping. So don't be afraid to try it super, super thin. I really encourage you to do it because honestly, notice how on this thin one, you have so much detail that's captured and nothing is really lost in that stamp. So I really think that could be super cool. Put a couple of butterflies on this, right? And I kind of love that, that organic shape of it with the swipe that we just did. So fun, all right. Now I also wanted to show another thing to use these sort of backgrounds that we swiped them off, okay? I'm sort of jumping all over the place here, but I hope you guys are enjoying this. Just, I wanted to really inspire and hopefully let your mind run to then bring this technique to a whole other level as well, all right? Because sometimes when I'm going, I was like, all right, well, I can put this in here and then let me take this and try to stamp it. So there's a ton of things you could do with this. Okay, so I want to go in, let's grab a couple of these too. I really like these backgrounds where they have the gradient, I think that's so fun. All right. And I'll just show you how to use all these backgrounds because you really get a lot of different types of backgrounds when you're creating things like this. Okay, I think I like, let's do this one right here, like this top one. All right, and this is just that thin layer of lunar paste. Now, like I said, this is great for die cutting um, because you almost create your own like a mirrored cardstock. But what I love about lunar paste, it is not as like reflective as a mirrored cardstock. So it doesn't look as tacky to me. That's one thing that I love about it. And then also I like that you can um, create gradients, right? Because on a normal mirrored cardstock like this, you're not gonna get those beautiful gradients. Okay. 
So with this, I'm going to then go in with a background stamp. I'll take the handwritten background stamp. And now if you tried stamping with a water-based ink, like if I stamped with my Simon Hurley inks, this isn't gonna stay onto the lunar paste. Because like I said, once the lunar paste dries, it sort of has like a plasticky layer onto it and nothing's going to dry on top unless if it's completely permanent. So you have to have something that's more permanent than a water-based ink. So in comes the archival ink. And this is going to work perfect with this. Now, what I love about Archival is it comes in a lot of different colors. So if you want to sort of match a color more of the background, you totally can. I think today, let's let's do a couple, okay? I'm gonna, for this one, I'll use a little bit of red and then I'll show you black as well, just so you can see the, the kind of difference in effects. So this one's called Vermilion. I think this red is gonna work beautifully with this background. And I'm just going to sort of take it and ink up this handwritten background stamp. Now, one thing that I think is kind of fun about these background stamps is if they're not perfect, so I'll sort of like swipe my ink pad and, and make sure it's not too perfect. All right, and I keep my background stamp facing up and then I'll sort of take my background and place it into it. And then I like to grab a pressure tool and just apply pressure all the way around to make sure that everything stamps. And then, oh, check that out. How cool is that? So a red is super cool because like I said, it sort of blends in until you like tilt it, you can see a little bit of that texture. Can you see it when it's less shiny, you see more of the text. I think that is beautiful. And now with an archival ink still, I'm going to still go in and heat set this just to make it a little bit more permanent. And now it's completely set into place. It's not going to smudge on top of that lunar paste. And you've got that gorgeous font texture in there. So with the red, it sort of blends more into that background a little bit. It just adds another layer of texture, but it doesn't take away from anything. But I wanna show you it with black too, because I think that can be super cool. So let me go in here. I'll grab another one of these backgrounds that we created with the ombre of color. And I'm just gonna go in and let's just like tap on some of this. I don't want it to fully fill in. So I'll tap it, and then this time, you know what? I'm gonna stamp it down, but I'm just gonna use my finger to give some pressure and not the pressure tool, because I don't want it everywhere. Cool, it kind of skips out in some places then. That's one thing that I love about these handwritten stamps is you don't need to stamp the whole thing in order for it to be perfect, because it's already a little bit kind of skippity. There's already some little like ink blotches that dropped onto there. And so it just creates kind of this cool uh, texturized look into the background. But it, again, it's not going to really take away from the rest of the card that you're doing. So that black ink looks beautiful on there too. And I love that when the black ink goes off to the side, it just blends in with the background of that black card stock. So super cool, right? And then again, the archival ink is an oil-based ink. So it does take a little bit of time to dry when it's on a more slick surface like this. So I'll just go in and heat set it. And then again, it's completely dry onto that surface of the lunar paste and you can keep moving on with your card making. Tiffany says that script stamp is my new favorite. It's perfection. I agree, Tiffany. I use this new script stamp all the time. It's like, I knew that it would be so great for just adding texture to backgrounds. I wanted something that was just great for texture and not necessarily the design of it, but just that it adds a great kind of script effect that you, that you can't really read, but you can still see all that amazing handwritten look to it. And that's what I love so much about it. It's not too bold and it creates a really beautiful effect. So that's a cool way to use these backgrounds with stamping on top of, a couple people asked if you can stamp on top of lunar paste. So I hope this answers that question. You totally can stamp on top of lunar paste and get such a beautiful effect with that, that script stamp or whatever stamp you use and, and using an archival ink. You could also probably use um, other permanent inks too. If it says that it stays on like plastic or something like that, um, that will work with this probably as well. But the archival ink is really nice because I love this for just um, waterproof stamping too. So it'll be great for lots of different techniques. Okay, now let's move on. If you want to clean off your stamp, um, and, and again, keep it nice and clean, I like to go in with an archival ink cleaner. Um, this is a solvent-based cleaner, so it's going to clean the archival off a little bit better than just water would, because usually I just stick to cleaning it off with water. But if I'm using a permanent ink like this, the archival cleaner works perfect, and then I'll spray a little bit of water down. And then again, these microfiber cloths are perfect. 
because they just get down into those details and make sure that everything's nice and clean. All right, and again, good as new. I like to keep my rubber stamps perfect. Let me know, let me know in the comments. Do you guys clean your stamps? Or do your stamps kind of stain? Um, I like to clean them off pretty much right away so that I can keep using them for techniques. You can see some of the techniques that I do are pretty messy, but the, the stamps and supplies, I like to keep as clean as possible. <laughs> All right, so now that I've done some of these textures and kind of background stamps, I also want to show how to use these stamp off techniques, uh, specifically the ones with the solar paste, because I think these are super cool. Now with this one, I would create a card right out of that. I don't think you need to add anything to this one, but if you're doing like these stamp off borders where you have the area stamped off, I want to show you, I want to test out something, honestly, because I haven't tested it before this, but I think it's going to work beautifully. So this one I used the, I think, Cross My Heart solar paste, and I stamped down the Kaleidoscope flowers. And again, you can't really see it. You can see a hint of that shine stamping in real life, but I want to make this stand out a little bit more. So to do this, I'm going to go in with a little bit of ink. Let's see. I'm gonna grab a couple different colors for Valentine's Day. We'll start off with a little bit of Prom Queen at the top. I'm gonna to grab it on my ink blending foam. This is the domed ink blending foam. And I'm just gonna go in here and blend this out. All right, just as I thought. Okay, good. I didn't know what was gonna happen necessarily, but I thought it would be pretty cool. And this is why I love Solar Paste for doing this is because Solar Paste almost looks white. So it's almost going to act as an embossed resist, except for this has that, that added shine to it, which I think is so cool too. And it sort of like fades off onto the edge because it wasn't perfect the way that it stamped. And so I sort of love that edge you get that you can blend and fade out. Whereas embossing, it's a little bit more perfect when it stamps, right? Okay, so I'm just going to blend down onto the surface and follow that stamp design. We'll add a little bit more ink here into the center. That's cool. And so it just really highlights that design as you go. Now I'll add a little bit of, let's see, I'll do a little bit of red. We'll go in with some bee sting. Blend it into the pink. And again, once that like image stops, I tend to just stop the ink and sort of fade it out into the white. My inks are really great at blending, so they'll blend together beautifully and create new colors in between. But also they'll be able to blend off into the white cardstock like super seamlessly, which is something that I love about them. So I'll just blend this down, kind of fade it out. Then I'll go in with, let's see, I'll go in with a little bit of Guppy. These are some of my like favorite color combos. I love this sort of warm color combination. And then blending an orange into this red is gonna be beautiful. And we'll just blend it out. So pretty. And then last but not least, we'll go in with a little bit of Shooting Star. All right. That's so pretty, I love it. <coughs> now, there's a little bit of yellow ink on top of here. So one thing you can do is go in with just a little bit of water and I'm just going to wipe off the top surface of this solar paste, which is going to reveal the white cardstock underneath and take any of the ink off of there. All right, so it'll create more. Sometimes the ink sits on top of the surface there. So you just wanna clean it off a little bit and then you get that gorgeous effect. So super cool. Again, it's a little bit different. I don't know if you guys can see that shine, but in person, the shine is a little bit more prevalent. But I love that instead of having to pull out your embossing powder and do a whole other background and and I like that it fades off too like this, but you're just getting this from a, a stamping off, right? You're getting it from one of these backgrounds, so it's cool that you're able to use it in several different ways and get completely different looks, but not have to spend a ton more time pulling out a bunch more supplies and using them all, right? Because it gives you that look just by stamping off, which I think is so super cool, right? How fun is that? Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to jump into another background and then 
at the end, we'll sort of put some of these cards together and give you some ideas on how to put them together. Does that sound good? I had some other things planned, so I wanted to still get to that, show you tons of inspiration in today's video, and then we'll jump into some of the stamping too, and I'll share a couple little ideas on how to maybe put these together as well, because there's some fun things with that. Okay, so now the next technique that I wanted to show is a really fun sort of Joseph's coat embossing technique. If you, I don't know if you guys have heard of that before. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of an old technique, but I like to revisit it a lot. So I'm gonna go into my stamp wheel here. Whenever I'm blending out some cardstock, I like to bring out the stamp wheel, mainly for this amazing sticky photopolymer mat that's inside of it. I'll place down a piece of my Simon Hurley stuck white cardstock, and then let's go in with some colors. Now, when it comes to blending today, I'm gonna pull out my favorite color combo. And this one's really fun. I'm gonna show you how to create a really easy rainbow blend with just three colors. Because a lot of times, I get a lot of questions on like what inks people should buy. I always recommend starting out with three colors. Um, I'll show you these three colors that I recommend um, because they create a really great blend of colors. That way you're able to create a lot of colors with those that you have, but then of course you can jump off from there and grab more inks and things like that and mix them in. But these are great basics. And so the color combination that I'm gonna use is Prom Queen, Shooting Star, and clear skies, because each one in between these is gonna create another color, and I'll show you that, and you'll see. It's really surprising and, and a super great color combination. So, I'll start off with a little bit of Prom Queen. I'm gonna go in with my domed foam blending tools and just blend this out. Now again, I like this stamp wheel because I don't have to hold on to the edges of the cardstock or anything. It's just gonna stay in place for me as I do my blending which is super nice. So you're not worried about getting fingerprints on anything or getting your hands all full of ink. I mean, not like it really matters right now because they're already, they're already covered, but that's okay. All right, so I'll blend down kind of a third of this and then I'll also blend a little bit of excess down a little bit lighter so that we can seamlessly blend into the next color. All right. Then we'll jump into Shooting Star, which is my next color. This is kind of the light and bright yellow from my line. I'll blend this right in the center, but again, I'm gonna take it up a little bit so you can see that when it blends in with that pink color, these are translucent dye-based inks, you can see that really great orange that it creates in between. So I love that it creates these new colors because it looks like you're using a lot more color on your background than you really are, which is awesome. So just blend that up into the pink to create that orange and then blend some more down on the surface. And it's super easy with my inks. We really formulated these so they do all three things. They do stamp, they react with water and they blend really beautifully. But blending was one of my top priorities when it came to creating this formula and making it work so easily because I love to do blended backgrounds like this that are super smooth. All right. And then last but not least, we'll go in with some clear skies to finish it off. This beautiful blue color. And you can see that when I bring that into the yellow color, you get a nice green in between there. So it kind of creates this darker mid-tone green color when you mix it together. So that's why I love this color combination. And it works really well for creating blends like this. All right. Yay, Janine says, I love this color combination. Thank you guys, I'm glad you like it. So definitely try it at home. Even if you have a whole collection of inks, like this is a fun one to just revisit because it creates such stunning effects, right? I love that orange color, I love that green. It's like the perfect color combination and it's gonna work great. I mean, you could go in and do more Valentine's Day colors if you want to, like pink, red, and purple if you want um, for a Valentine's Day card, but this is gonna be kind of fun with these bright colors to do this technique. All right, so I'll lift this off the stamp wheel. It doesn't rip your cardstock or anything, um, which I really like. And then to clean this off, I just spray it down with a little bit of water. And I'll grab another piece of paper towel or sort of a lint-free cloth. The thing that I like about my ink pads is they don't really stain anything, so they won't really necessarily stain your stamp wheel mat, which is really nice. All right, we'll put this right on top so that it doesn't have any dust in it next time we go to work with it. And then when it comes to this background, now you might think that this is dry because it's dry to the touch completely, right? 
but the ink is still sitting in the surface of this cardstock and still drying inside of there. There's still a little bit of moisture inside. And so what you're gonna need to do is go in. You could set this off to the side and let it dry for a while, or you could go in with a heat tool. I like this one from Ranger just because it's nice and quiet, and you could just go in across that surface and heat set this completely. So I'll just go in and heat set it for, I don't know, maybe a minute or two and just kind of, it helps to dry those inks a little bit more and get all the moisture out of there. And you'll also notice that as this dries, the colors will sort of blend together a little bit more, smooth down a little bit, and it creates a really great blended color. I love it. Now, when you're going in and doing the rest of this technique, another thing that I find to help dry the ink and kind of get rid of any of the moisture on the cardstock is just going in with an anti-static powder tool. So I'll just go in with the anti-static powder tool. This is usually meant for embossing, and I'll just, swipe this across the surface, and this is going to add sort of like a chalky, powdery finish on here, and it's going to help smooth this out and get rid of any moisture that's on the surface. All right, so that one's super helpful too, using that sort of powder tool. Now, it takes a little bit of time, and then you can always go in and test it using clear heat embossing powder. You'll bring the clear heat embossing in, throw it on top, and if none sticks, you're good to go, okay? So definitely, uh, use that heat embossing technique. Now, if there is some that sticks, brush it off and then continue heat setting and using your powder tool until it's completely dry on that surface. A couple of people asked what colors again. I'll show really quick. Sorry about that. It is Prom Queen, Shooting Star, and Clear Skies to create this blend. A super beautiful color combination. I love it. You could also switch this out for a red, but I, I like the pink better but you could use a red there if you want to, too. Okay. Now, I've already got one that I did earlier. So this one's already completely dry. You can see that the colors kind of soften just a little bit and they kind of smooth out even more. So it creates this really gorgeous looking cardstock. And again, I'll just use my antiseptic powder tool for, for good luck to make sure that nothing sticks where we don't want it to again. Okay. Yes, and remember you can always come back and watch this again too if you decide you want to use some of these techniques, come back to the video and rewatch it too and we can sort of craft it along with each other as well. All right, now for this one, I am gonna use the Bitty Botanicals background stamp. This is a newer one. It is a really great solid design. So there's lots of solid florals, but also solid leaves kind of going throughout it too. When you do a technique like this Joseph's Coat technique, you want something that's more solid. So I thought that this one would be great for like uh, Valentine's Day just because I like the florals, but you could use like this one. Uh, this one's called Moroccan Tile. It's got some great solid areas all throughout. This one's super fun. Uh, it's this uh, funky chevron design, and this one's super cool because it has peel outs too, so you can use some of these stripes individually. Um, let's see. These were always fun. So like for Easter, this one's called Egg Hunt. You can have these beautiful egg designs all throughout. So definitely look on the Simon Hurley page. Again, it's linked up top, and you could use uh, the code love Simon for Valentine's Day for 10% off on all Simon Hurley products, which is awesome at Ranger. So definitely check some of those stamps out as well. This one's super new and I've wanted to test it out with the Joseph's Coat technique because this one is just so much fun. So I am going to go in here and I'll go in with a little bit of Versamark clear sticky ink. Uh, you could use any sort of embossing ink for this and I'm just going to go onto the surface and ink up my background stamp. So just ink it up fully. It's pretty easy, and we'll just kind of do a little bit of heat embossing. So if you guys are familiar with heat embossing, which most of you probably are, this should be pretty familiar. I'll ink up the background stamp, and then I'll take my background, and again, place it down into the stamp. Now, some people like to stamp their background down onto their cardstock. I like to do it this way and use my pressure tool to just give all the pressure. I find that that's super helpful for me and it usually gives like such great results. And I also like it cause I don't have to remove anything from the clear backer. I don't have to put anything into a stamping tool. It works pretty well for me. All right, so there we have our image all stamped. Let me get rid of that little fuzz that's in there. And then we'll go in with a little bit of clear heat embossing powder. Now, a couple of people asked me what this, this clear heat embossing powder is. This is just a couple of the jars of Ranger clear embossing powder that I've uh, put into a clear container like this. I like to, 
um, use these clear containers because it just makes it so easy because I use clear heat embossing powder all the time. And so it makes it easy to just throw over your layer of clear heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, have it all fall back in instead of having to dump it back into a tiny little jar. So definitely check this out. Use a, a container like this if you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself. All right, then we'll tap off any of the excess. And that looks pretty good. All right. <clears throat> and then we'll go in and heat set this. Now, to heat set it, I use a different heat tool. I use one that's a little bit more directed. It gets just as hot as the Ranger heat tool, but um, this one is going to direct the heat a little bit more and, and heat it up a little bit quicker. Now I'm going to turn on my heat tool for a couple seconds and, and heat it off into a different direction just so that it helps heat it up and then I'll go right onto the embossing and heat set it, okay? And this is gonna be beautiful. It kind of, once it turns clear, it really brightens that color up and it's, it's beautiful. All right, a couple comments. Lots of you guys are saying you, you clear heat and boss every time you stamp now because of me. It is something that I do quite often. It really helps um, kind of seal any ink that's underneath, but also I love the look of that little bit of shine. Like this is a fun background even just as it is now because it gives more of like a tone on tone look. So clear heat embossing just darkens the ink just slightly. So it gives that tone on tone look with a bunch of shine. So honestly, this could be cool too, but but I'll show you how to finish off this technique uh, in a really fun way. So there's a couple of inks you could use here. Now you could use um, an archival ink and you could also use like a, a Versafine or a pigment ink. Now I'm gonna stick with the pigment ink because archival ink you have to sort of wipe off of the embossed design whereas the pigment ink, it doesn't stick to those areas as much. So I'll go in with this pigment ink. Now the one downside to the pigment ink is that it takes um, a little bit longer to dry, so you do just have to wait for it to dry and not sort of smudge it with your fingers. All right, I'm gonna go in with a domed foam blending sponge right into here, and then I'll just go right onto the surface with some black ink. And now it looks really scary at first, honestly. It looks like, again, you're ruining your background. Um, but most good techniques like this usually start out like a hot mess, and this one for sure does. So I'll just go in here ink this all up and add a nice layer of that black ink onto the surface. And what this is doing is it's darkening that background. Now it is adding a little bit of ink on top of the stamping tube, but we'll easily be able to wipe that off. Okay. And just go down and blend it on the surface. And it's gonna create this super bold and beautiful look to your blending. Now this is why I love that bright colored background like that, that really beautiful rainbow background that we created because those colors are going to stand out so beautifully against the black. All right, super cool. So now we finished that. I'm gonna go in with, let me put that away. Otherwise it's gonna spill everywhere. All right, I'm gonna go in and clean off my desk a little bit. Perfect. And then to clean this off, 
I'll go in with a little bit of cloth with some water on it and just wipe that surface down. And you can sort of see now that the ink color is coming back to life. So you can see how dull it is. It really is kind of scary, honestly. And now you can wipe it off and get all that super bold and vibrant color. How fun is that? I love it. It's one of my favorite techniques to do. And I thought that this background stamp would be so perfect for it. And it really is because it has such a great amount of bold space. And then in between, you get all of that insane black color that really intensifies it. So it creates a gorgeous, gorgeous look to that surface. I love it. One of my favorite techniques, honestly, it was probably one of the first card making techniques that I learned, but whenever I get a new bold background stamp, I'm like this, I've got to try it with this. And I think this one's one of my favorite, favorite stamps to use with it. I think that looks really cool. I think like I'll put a couple little butterflies on here to finish it off. And I think that's going to be a great card, right? All right, let me turn that back down to the work surface here. And now let's go in and put some of these cards together. I think I'm gonna do a card with this background for sure. Then let's see. I'll do a card with the background that we created with that gorgeous text in it. I really love this one. And then let's do, let's do something else that's pretty easy. I like this one too. Just because I like how subtle it is. And I'm gonna show you how to, to make a card with something so subtle like that. All right, we'll do something super quick and easy. I'm gonna go in and use, um, let's do a couple of things. I'm gonna go in and use this for a couple of the cards. I love this uh, stamp set, it's called Beautiful Blooms. This is one of my favorites. It's got all of these gorgeous florals to it, which is beautiful. And of course you could stamp these in black and white, or you could stamp them in different colors to give them their shading. And they also have a coordinating die set from Spellbinders. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna use a couple of these butterflies for the floral card, like I said. I think that'll be sort of fun to have a couple of little butterflies flying around. <coughs> okay, and then let's see. I think with this one, I'm gonna have like a floral right in the center. I think this one's kind of fun. Let's do this. That sort of rose looking floral, I think that'll be good. Okay, now when I do my stamping, I'm going to add my color in. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of red here and ink this up. I'll ink up just the top of the flower first. Now I think that sometimes these florals can look a little bit too bold at first, right? With all of just that black ink. So I'm gonna go in here Line this up and stamp it down in that red color. I think this is gonna be really pretty. Now the reason I'm doing it in my stamping tool is in case, yeah, that's gorgeous, see? So there you have all of that amazing color and all of those shading lines where they're a little bit darker, it then creates that darker color in that area. Thank you so much, Amy, I really appreciate it. Okay, so how fun is that? All right, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use some of these little detail blending tools. These are from Ranger, and I like how small they are because we can add ink into much smaller areas onto the card. The thing I love about these is that they are a little bit darker, and you can get them into smaller areas. Now they're dual-sided, so you can work a lot with them. And I'm gonna go in here, I'll use a little bit more bee sting to stamp it down and just add some in a couple different areas across the flower. Now I'm not really too worried about like where I add it and where it really makes sense, right? I'm just gonna add it in a couple different areas and stamp it down. Check that out. It just creates a beautiful blended effect. I really love it. So I'm gonna go back in to those areas a little bit more and then stamp again. How fun is that? All right, do we like that? I think that's cool. All right, and then I'll go in one more time to just even it out a little bit. Oh, and stamp it once more, just all in red. Super pretty, I like that. So like I said, I think that sometimes people get a little bit nervous about just stamping in black, right? Because it's so bold and the packaging is really bold and intense. But 
when you actually go in and stamp, you could use whatever color you want and really make it your own. So here I'm gonna use a little bit of later gator for the stems. Just use the edge of the ink pad to sort of aim and get it in the right spots. All right. And then I'll stamp that down. Ooh, I love that. Okay, and then do it one more time in this color and then I'll go in with a little bit of a darker, deeper green and stamp it down as well. Now, I, I haven't done it with this stamp set before, but I do love these stamps that we've been releasing. There was one called Halftone Holiday too, where there's just so many different lines in the stamp and it makes it so that it's a really great stamp to just add coloring with inks like this so that you don't have to necessarily go in and color it like watercolor or something like that if that's not your thing, right? So I'll go in and I'm just going to add down a little bit of fake plant all throughout. All right, I'll tap some down on the stems here. All right. And stamp it down. And I'm reading the comments, but they're on kind of a small screen in front of me. So sometimes they're a little bit hard to read, but I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to interact with everyone as well. But sometimes when I'm so focused in here, it's a little bit hard. So I haven't been seeing what's been going on in the comment section too much, but I really appreciate you guys. All right. I gotta get back, gotta get back into it because I used to be able to like read the whole screen as I was crafting and like just look up at the screen while I'm doing it. And I'm like, that is, that's a little difficult, especially when you haven't done it for a year or so. All right, something I really love about the stamp wheel is that I'm just able to lock it into place and then like clean off my stamps and not worry about what's underneath it, which is awesome. I'll wipe that off. Again, I love that my inks don't stain. And then I think that's perfect. I think that's good. I think that's all I'm gonna stamp with this. I was gonna do it in black too, but I don't think I need to. Um, and then we'll stamp some of these butterflies out too. Let's do that. So we'll just lay them down. Let's do them like this. It's gonna look weird how I'm, how I'm laying them down, but I want there to be separate room. Because you guys know, if we're die cutting these, there's gotta be enough room in between each one so I don't have to run it through a million times. All right. And then I'll go in with a little bit of VersaFine Clear ink again. And ink it up. All right. And then we'll stamp it down. That is good, I think that's perfect. Oh yeah, let me get that a little bit more. Just give more pressure in that area and then it should stamp. That looks great. And then again, I'll lock it into place and clean it off. Again, these things, these microfiber cloths have been game changing for cleaning and making sure your stamps, like all of the little details of the stamps get cleaned out. <laughs> All right, then I can go in here and let me go in and do some clear heat embossing powder. Like I said, guys, this is like my thing. I can't stamp without using clear heat embossing powder. It's just, it's now a thing. So I'll throw a little bit over the black ink. The black ink especially because it takes a little bit longer to dry and I like the shine too that it gives. And then I'll heat set this till it's clear and shiny and then I'll give you some coloring tips too. All right, so now they are super shiny. Oh yeah, you always need to stamp 
the very detailed images and the color. Yeah, because the black does throw you off. Let me show you. Yeah. Lots of you guys. You can see it here. I mean, it gives kind of a more vintagey look when you stamp it just in black. But when you're using it in color like that, it really brings the, the image to life. Whereas on here, it looks kind of scary, right? So I wanted to show you guys that because it's like, it looks a little terrifying when it's in the packaging, but you really have so many options with just adding some color and coloring it in just like that without even using any ink pads, which is awesome. Okay, now let's go in and add some color. I think for these, I'm just gonna keep it super simple. What should I do? I could either, let me do, uh, let me do some water coloring. All right. So I'm gonna go in with a couple different colors. I'll use a little bit of guppy. I'm gonna add this down into my craft sheet. I'll also use a little bit of Prom Queen. And then let's see. I'll do a little bit of No Diving too, which is this beautiful kind of mid-tone bright blue color. Okay. I like to add the water down onto my desk like this instead of um, in a cup because I will, I will fully spill the cup of water. <laughs> Whereas when it's on the desk like this, it's less scary. And then I'll go in and do my watercoloring. So whenever I watercolor, I like to start off with just a layer of water down onto the images first. It makes it a little bit easier for the color to blend. So just a wash of water. And then I'll go in with my colors. For the middle one, I'm gonna use a little bit of guppy, which is gonna be this bigger butterfly. And these images are super easy to color in. Just a little bit of color here and there. And then I'm gonna go in with less water then, and that same exact color, which will give me a darker color and just sort of add that darker color right into the center. So you can see it gives you a little bit of shading then by using more water and then less water in the center and it'll give you a little bit of dimension. All right, cool. Then for this one, I'm gonna use a little bit of pink. So I'll go in with a little bit of pink, add a little bit of lighter color all over. This is that prom queen color. All right, and then I'll darken it up right in the center. Super fun. All right, and then one more. And this one I'm gonna do in that blue color. I really love this blue color. It's one of my favorites in the line. I'll add it all throughout. And then we'll add it darker in the center. It's a good way to like, using less water is a good way, instead of having to switch the colors up completely, to get more of that detailed and shaded look. Okay, now I'm gonna clean this off the surface. All right, and then I'll go in and, and die cut these out. Now, when it comes to the dies, I like to use these um, magnetic sheets from Stampin' Storage. I love them, they're super thick. So they really hold the dies nicely. And then I'll just pull off the images I wanna use. Super easily. All right. I'm gonna go in here. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of mint tape Hold them down. I do have a lot of favorites. <laughs> do I say, I probably say that like everything's my favorite, honestly, but it really is. I switch off a lot though too. I make a lot of cards, so I gotta have a lot of favorites, right? Otherwise they'd all look the same. All right. I know I do need a bigger magnet card too. Gotta get those in bigger sizes because we really include a lot of dies in those sets. Those uh, coordinating sets have a ton in them. So I need bigger ones for those. All right. They're pretty easy to line up. Let's see. All right. and then I'll line up this flower. Now also, I did want to let anyone know, so if anyone's just coming in, Ranger is having a deal right now for 10% off all Simon Hurley Create products to celebrate going live today and to celebrate Valentine's Day, and the code is LOVESIMON, and it's valid until the 11th, I believe, which is awesome. So thanks to Ranger for that, and the link is pinned here, and it's also um, in the description box too, so if you guys wanna check that out and go shopping, you totally can, it's awesome. And then I'll run this right through the die cutting machine. I'm gonna do it this way, because there's a lot on my desk here. 
I finally replaced the top plate because I had cut through it so much that it was leaving like marks on my cards. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta replace that. Oh, um, let's see, was the florals, the florals were licensed artwork, yep. Some of the stamp sets I draw and some of them aren't licensed. That one was, there's so much detail in this one, I, I wouldn't be able to draw, to draw all that. All right. <coughs> all right, so. Let me go in here, pop these guys out quickly. Okay. And then we'll be able to go in and put these together. So I think for this one, like I said, I think I want that. Oh, or do I want that? I think I want that. That looks good. And then for this one, we'll use these butterflies. Okay. I think that'll be fun. Cool. I think I like that. Yeah, that, that's pretty. Okay, so sometimes you gotta convince yourself. You gotta like figure out the, uh, the placement and everything. I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go in here and let's see. I think I want to do like a, maybe I'll do one where you kind of like cut the edge a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut this on an angle. It might ruin it. It might, but I'm gonna go for it. Okay. So I'll go in here. I love like an angled design like this. It's really fun to do. And I think it creates a really striking design and it sort of like follows the leaves of this one too. Cool, I'm gonna cut it a little bit more. You guys are probably screaming. I would be too. But I think that's fun, I like that. All right, and then it'll make like the top stand out a little bit more. Cool. So for this, I'm gonna use a stark white card base. Yeah, you guys are saying don't cut it. I know, I know. It's kind of scary when you do that. You gotta really commit. And then I'll go in with this misty glue press. I really like this for adding glue down on the cards. All right, and yes, you could use the other side for another card too, which is awesome. And I'll place this down. Right under my card. Okay. And then we can pop this right up. I think that's so pretty. I love it when the card is split like this. It just creates such a fun design. And it sort of follows along with those leaves and sort of the angle of the flower too. So I think that's pretty. Okay. Now, you guys are really seeing the whole inside look on my creative process because usually I don't put together a whole card live either, but. And I sort of have like go-to card designs too. So this is like one of my favorites. Like if I'm like feeling in a little creative rut or if I don't know what to do with the card, I'll usually cut it at an angle like this. And that's one of my favorite ways to put it together. I'll just go in with a little bit of foam tape. All right. You know what, I'm gonna put it right there. That should be good. Pop it up. I love it. All right. How fun is that? And then, let's see, I'm gonna go in. Let's use a sentiment. Oh, I like just, I love you. That's so simple and such a good little Valentine's. We're making Valentine's Day cards today, I guess. I mean, that's what I titled it, but it really turned into a, a whole day of techniques. Okay. So, let me go in. I really like this. Um, this is the Ranger Alcohol Ink Black cardstock. I really like that for sentiments because it's like so jet black. So I'll go in here with my sentiment and in fact, I'm gonna do two sentiments. Uh, mm, I'm gonna actually use this for both. I think, yeah, that's good for both. And I'm gonna stamp them down in white. Or sorry, not white. I'm gonna heat and moss them in white. I'm losing 
brain cells as we speak now. It's getting to the end, right? Okay, I'm gonna go in with some Versamark, clear sticky ink, and I'll stamp it down. Perfect. I'll do it twice too. Okay, and then with this, I have the same thing with white heat embossing powder too, so I can throw down the excess, tap off any, and then I have a tip. Lightly blow on it, it really helps, I don't know why. Tapping off the excess knives will leave some of the white heat embossing powder, but um, if you blow on it, some sometimes some more of the, the white heat embossing powder falls off better, so yeah. All right, so there we go, a really nice bright white look. And then, there's a little bit of like excess powder on here. I just sort of take my fingers and the oil from your fingers sort of wipes it off a little bit more. And then we'll go in and cut it out. I'll use my guillotine trimmer. that sentiment right out, that's perfect. That looks great. And then I'll go in here. I just like line it up with the edge of the guillotine. And that works pretty well. This little plastic guide you line it up with. And it makes sure that everything is nice and even. All right. Oh yes. Oh, Gina K does that too, that's awesome. Yeah, blowing on the cardstock, it really works. I don't know, like tapping sometimes, sometimes tapping gets rid of too much or not enough. And it's like, so I lightly tap and then I just gently blow on it too. And it really helps. All right, I like that. Cute, I like that. Okay, this is totally what goes through my head. I'm like, oh, do I like it or do I hate it? And then let me move on from there. I think that's pretty. All right, and if I can't tell if I like something, sometimes I'll FaceTime my friends, and I'll be like, hey, does this look good? Because I know they'll give me their honest opinion. Okay, that looks great, I love it. I love the shine of this background, but then like I said, how we were able to inlay all that gold into the font there, and then finishing it off with this beautiful floral. That red matches the color there since we stamped in the same color. So super cool, I love it. Okay. So then, I'm gonna go in here, and <clears throat> I'm gonna go in and just fussy cut this down. Or not fussy cut it, I'm gonna trim it down. Um, I'll go in and trim it down a little bit on each side. And then let's see. Sometimes I like to just cut the edges and see what it looks like. That might be pretty. Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool, cool. Sometimes I don't like to square off the whole thing because they all look the same then. So I think that it's cool to sometimes just cut the edges, get a little bit of white border and not have the whole thing be squared off. All right, I'm going to place this down with a little bit of liquid glue. Cool, and it's got that nice even white border on either side then. And then, let's see, do I pop these guys up? I'll pop them up on some foam tape. And the thing that I like about using foam tape with these butterflies is I just take the slightest little bit of foam tape. So I'll just take like a little piece from the center like this. And then I'll put it right in the center only on these butterflies, leaving the wings um, not adhered. And then I'll go in and I'm gonna adhere that down like right near the yellow and orange. So we colored these strategically because then this pink one will go right up by the pink color. 
and we'll just put them at little angles so that it looks like they're flying. Pretty. I used to, um, I used to put the butterflies just straight up and down on my cards, um, not realizing that it looked like they were like dead butterflies. So definitely put them at an angle if you want to make it look like they're taking flight. <laughs> All right, and then, guys, where did I put that? Oh no, oh right here, I was smart. I put it on top of a jar of lunar paste. Okay, and I'll just add my sentiment down. Right there. Cool. How fun is that? So two really great, easy Valentine's Day cards. I love this. I love the Joseph's Co. technique that we were able to do to create that really bright and bold background, but yet giving that black ink on the background to add tons of contrast to it. Really super pretty. And then again, finishing off with those beautiful Blooms stamp sets turned out really great. I love it. Well, so much that happened today, guys. Um, I love all these backgrounds that we created with, with all of you guys, with all the different lunar and solar pastes as well, all the different textures we were able to add, and then even going in and doing some things with like solar paste too and doing resists. There was a lot. And then turning some of them into cards was so much fun. So I hope you guys learned a little bit from today's live. Um, it's been, like I said, a year and a half. So. Hopefully it went smooth enough. Uh, it, w it wasn't perfect, but um, it was tons of fun. I'm glad that I got to share that technique with you guys with that kind of textured inlay with the lunar and solar paste and then that fun Joseph Co. technique. It's a good one. Yes, lots of you guys are saying you haven't done the Joseph's Co. technique, but it's so fun um, putting whatever colors you want underneath it and then putting that black on top really makes it shine. 